What's up guys? Welcome back to Bay Area BFS. Gonna do another video today. This time it's not uh, specifically BFS related, but it's definitely a uh, you know piece of my BFS journey, um, and that is my kayak. Uh, and really want to go through and kind of show you uh, how I set up my kayak for BFS fishing. And same thing with like trolling, whether it be for call it crappie, trout bluegill all the way up to like halibut uh, striped bass in the ocean and stuff like that so just want to go through and show you some of the things I got on my kayak and then I uh, got some cool new little gadgets we'll call it that'll help that I think really make a huge difference and I'm gonna be uh, sharing some of those with you um, some cool little things to help protect the kayak or just make the whole kayak fishing experience um, just that much more enjoyable guys if you haven't tried kayak fishing I strongly recommend it. It is freaking amazing. Uh, not only are you just out there, but it's a whole different level of connection to the water, connection to the environment, connection just uh, to, to the fish. And um, even if you're not catching anything, it's just a nice, nice day out. But um, yeah, I'll throw you on the chest and we'll kind of go through and I'll give you a rundown of my kayak. All right. All right, guys. So this is my kayak here. It is a Hobie Lynx. I believe it's uh, 10 and a half feet. You can see right there the Mirage Lynx. Uh, this kayak itself is not your traditional kayak. Um, it's kind of a hybrid between a stand-up paddleboard um, and a full-blown kayak. It is a sit-on-top kayak. Um, there are plenty of you know other YouTubers who have posted videos about this thing. Uh, I'll just tell you what I really like about this kayak is that it's super light very easy for me to car top up there um and uh yeah and it's fast uh you know some of the things that people are going to complain about is it can be a little bit loud when you get the hull slap but honestly it doesn't bother me at all and doesn't seem to bother the fish you know i've been out there in some rough conditions with this thing and never had any issues um but yeah so maybe what i'll do is i'll start from the top and we'll make our way to the back uh and then um We'll go through and I'll just show you some of the uh, uh, parts I got. All right. All right, so taking it from the top, uh, I'll start with underneath. So what we got here, not sure if you guys see that there, that is a keel guard, uh, homemade keel guard. Um, as you can see, it's all kind of beat up right there and that's exactly what you want on the keel guard and not your kayak. That keel guard started out as a black kydex plate and uh you know what you do is you take a piece of paper you kind of cut out your uh your shape and then uh what i did is i stuck it in the toaster oven don't use your you know the one that you're using for food uh go on craigslist or facebook or you know buy nothing group and just find someone who's giving away a free toaster oven um but i found that you stick the kydex in the toaster oven heat it up uh, and you could just mold it very, very easy. Um, I, I, you know, I tried using the uh, heat gun, um, and it just wasn't as it wasn't as easy because you know it'd get hot in certain areas and then get cool in the other areas, and it was just constant, um, constantly having to reheat and, and mold. Uh, but yeah, piece of Kydex. You can get this on Amazon. Uh, if I remember, I'll put the link down in the uh, description. Um, but very easy to make your own. Uh, it's just double stick taped and then surrounded with uh, glued down with marine silicone. And uh, I've had this thing for probably about a year and a half now. And um, for about a year and a half, and you can see that it's still going strong. Uh, also down on the bottom while we're down here, you'll see I got some of this car molding right here all throughout the kayak going all the way back. And what this, you know, this is really, uh, again, from Amazon. It's designed for uh, like car doors and things like that. So when people open their, you know, their door and it hits your car, it's supposed to protect your doors. Um, it's just, you know, very, very good double stick tape. You just buy a roll of it and you just roll it on and it does a really good job of protecting the, um, uh, the kayak from any scratches. All right, so from the top here, um, one of the things that I really like to do is obviously, you know, for, for the audience out there, I like to uh, record things as they happen. Uh, so currently right now I have a one and a half 
uh, inch ram mount ball here. You'll see a, to a uh, ram bar uh, all the way up to a um, uh, GoPro. This is a battery, also tripod, uh, straight into my GoPro 11 mini. And this right here, right now I'm doing voice control, so I'll tell it to, you'll hear me say GoPro, start recording, GoPro, stop recording. Um, but that's what it's, what's taking the uh, kind of the front view of the, um, uh, or, you know, catching the, the front of uh, looking directly at me uh, as I'm catching fish and pulling it up. Okay, right here we got the, um, this, this little adapter right here. That, so you'll see that the, the standard uh, links has these two bolts right here. And this is really for, I think, you know, different attachments, but if there's a bar that you can put across here. Um, there's a number of different things. Um, maybe I think maybe it's, it's specifically designed for a sail kit. I'm not really sure. Uh, but regardless, you have these holes and um, it allows me to add on this right here. This is from uh, Navari. So Nick over at Navar uh, Fishing Kayak Accessories makes a bunch of stuff for the Hobie Lynx. And this is, you can see it's 3D printed. You put it on and then you could slap on whatever you want. I got a Yak Attack uh, lock and load base on there right now. And uh, this just allows me to do some various things. You know, if I want to put a rod holder on here, if I want. All right, and then going on the other side here, you'll see we have, I got Yakma double header uh, holders on both sides. Uh, one of them is holding my oar. Uh, I lost my original uh, Hobie oar. Uh, on the water all right guys so back at it here um so i lost my hobie ore and uh needed another one and so decided to get this guy right here this was like 20 bucks hey how are you this is like 20 bucks this is the uh, atwood ore and what i like about this is it expands and locks into place um i know some people like the uh, double paddle uh, but for me, I'm usually pedaling, uh, and now that I have the Texas paddle motor, uh, power paddle, uh, I really don't think I'm going to need, um, I'm going to be oaring very much. So, but it's great. It's nice. Folds easy, uh, easy to store on the kayak, easy to throw in the car, and it's really for in case of emergency. All right, next. So we got the Hobie drive here. Uh, the Mirage Drive 180 and you'll see when we snap up here it comes right out when we put it back in just drop it back in um, one of the cool coolest things uh, I just added to this drive also from Navare kayaks is this right here so this is a uh, Mirage Drive mount and you can see it's this full plastic with the screws right here uh, up to a carbon fiber bar and what this allows me to do, besides acting as a handle, like so, is it allows me, when I'm pulling in to shore, and I don't want to have the, the pedals down, I can actually just drop this in, lock it in, and now it's, it's locked in, it's stable, so I don't have to worry about this thing tumbling off the side of the kayak or, you know, just flopping around on me. Um, so it makes it very, very easy. Uh, what's really nice about it, as well as that this allows me to when i'm moving the kayak from the car to the shore or from the shore back to the car uh just keeps this thing locked in so it's not flopping around all over the place and that's that's really really nice all right moving on down um for rod holders these are my favorite right here these are the stealth rod holders these are the i think qr2s is what they're called uh, if you get the rod holders, make sure you get the QR2s. Uh, the QR1s are more narrow right here, so it's really geared for maximum like one inch handles, uh, rod handles, but right here with these, I can get much larger handles. So I have no problems with my saltwater rods or my freshwater rods. Um, it's very nice, you lift the rod up, this thing pops up, you drop your rod down, the butt goes down, boom, it locks it into place. I got one on each side. Um, I've actually attached them to um, these little Scotty uh, drives. So I got a little, uh, to my H-rail, I got the um, Scotty mount to 
some adapters I kind of just jerry-rigged this all together and so this allows me to adjust uh, on the fly when I'm on the water if I'm gonna if I need to raise the uh, tip it up or down like so allows me to do that uh, very easy easily um, and so yeah have one on your side and um, they work great um, obviously as I mentioned I have these on my H rail these do not come with the kayak these are uh, separate accessories um, I strongly recommend them uh, it just gives you a lot more um, points to install things the kayak itself comes standard with just kind of like this short little bar you'll see it's just like this little track right here and so the ability once you add this on you can add track components to the top here you'll see right here there's like a little insert um, and yeah on top of that it's really nice in case you're you have things on the deck uh, if your kayak kind of slides back and forth, it prevents the um, things from kind of falling off the side. Uh, so yeah. All right, moving on back to the other side, moving on. I got this tray. Uh, this is uh, the Hobie tray, I think. Um, not particularly fond of it. I, I love the idea behind it. Um, I had to kind of move it around the setting just to get it to, to sit on this kayak properly. Um, I love the pocket. What I'm not a big fan of is this, these, you know, inserts here, uh, because nothing, I, nothing seems to fit in it, or if it does, it's just really sloppy. So I've just kind of resorted to sticking that there and then putting my fish grips on that and just kind of dangles. Um, and you know, it works, it works. Uh, and then we have the little leash right here, and I will generally put my VHF radio if I'm going salt water on this, or my two-way radio for fresh water. And then on the other side, I got some snips, two pairs of snips. Um, and yeah, all right. On the inside, what you can't see here is there used to be a handle right here. There was a handle on both sides. There's one right over here. You'll see that, the handle. Um, I took the handle off uh, because Navari Kayaks also came out, Nick also came out with um, these really cool uh, adapters. And so I never need two handles on here. I just always use that one right there. Um, and so I was able to repurpose this side by taking the handle off. He created like this little mount right here. And what I'd use it for is I put a little ram ball in there and I have my fish finder uh, attached to that. Um, so when I'm sitting here, I can just tilt it up or down and then I'll usually I like to leave it just a little bit loose so it slides up and down depending on where the sun is I can very easy for me to get out of the glare um, but I really like having it down here um, I used to have it on my seat right here uh, so left the ball there but I like it really like it right here and then on this side where the other end of the handle used to go I got the uh, yak tack cup holder and so, you know, stick my water bottle and, and stuff in there and, and it's great. Um, the cup holder, uh, the one that comes with the Hobie Lynx, used to go right here on the handle. And uh, I replaced it with a Navarre Fishing um, uh, rod holder. So it just slides on. Let's see. Slides on. Slides off. And so when I'm catching something... Uh, I can stick my rod in there. It's kind of like, you know, a rod holder for your staging. I wouldn't use it for trolling. Okay, going back even further, got some more rod holders. These are the Hobie rod holders. Uh, you can just pop it out, adjust it how you like, upright. Um, generally on, on this side, I like to put my uh, net sometimes in here, or I'll put an extra rod in here. Um, if you see me with it kind of lean back like that, then I'm you know, probably trolling a little bit using that as trolling. Uh, but yeah, generally I do use the stealth. All right, coming back even further here. Well, let's get to the seat. You'll see right here. I got seat risers by Navarre kayak also on both sides. And so I'm not a tall person guys, you know, I'm about five, eight, um, or I'm five, eight and, uh, you know, so I don't necessarily need the risers, but what I found was bef before I had the risers, when I would pedal, uh, my toes would get kind of numb. It's almost like I wasn't getting good blood circulation there. And I don't know if it was just coincidence or what, 
but after I put those in, um, that numbness went away. So now I just leave them on. I like it. Um, so yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. They're great. Um, and then down here, you'll see the newest addition to the kayak. This is the Texas Power Paddle Remora. And this is the battery right here. And below the battery, you'll see where the cable goes down right there. It goes straight down to the motor. And this motor right here goes where, is installed where the uh, standard transducer mount goes on the link. So normally there's a plate here and the transducer goes inside there. This thing just goes up. When it's not in use, you turn it on and it drops down and uh, gives me lots of power. I got another video uh, on using it out on the salt water. So, you know, take a look at that if you want to see uh, how it performs and what I liked about it. All right, going back, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. Uh, you know, I got my 4 amp um, Nakwa uh, battery, lithium battery for my uh, fish finder, which is a Garmin Striker 4 uh, Clearview. Uh, I got my H Hobie, what is it, Hobie crate, uh, H crate, and uh, you know this is where I generally where I just there's no storage on this kayak, so this is this becomes the storage. Uh, added on some bungees. Um, see there, and anything I put inside here can will be protected by that. Just release that, easy access. All right, rod holders. Uh, I just added on some some rod holders to this. I could have bought the the Hobie ones. They make Hobie ones for it, but you know, this is super easy and cheap. I think all three of these cost me uh, I don't know less than ten bucks. Uh, one of them from Hobie, I think, costs like thirty or forty, maybe even fifty bucks. So um, really, really inexpensive add-on, and they work great for uh, my rods, extra rods. Okay, back here I got a plate. Added on plate. Added on some more tracks don't really need these tracks anymore as I start to uh, refine and min you know get to a m very minimalistic state on my kayak um, there's not much I need to put back here but what I do like is adding a single mount for my flag right in the middle make sure you're always kayaking with the flag very important so uh, boaters can see you all right coming on the back side so you'll see guys we got this situation with the links and this comes from lifting your kayak um, whenever I car top uh, you know that's, that's really it's all coming from car topping um, and I've really struggled with uh, trying to keep this protected now you'll see right here these little um, uh, protectors here these little guards are right here they're not scratched up at all and that's because these are new um, and these are very different from what was what originally came with the uh, the Hobie Lynx. Um, these are made by Super Yak Fishing. And what I really like about these right here, on top of just being a little bit thicker, so you'll see right here, it's a little bit thicker. It goes into the same hole, screws into the same hole. Um, but these guards wrap around this. So if you look at all the other ones, they kind of stop right here. Um, these guards wrap around so it prevents it from sliding. It also pr pr protects it so when you lift up the kayak, it rolls. Um, it doesn't damage uh, the edge like this. And so really hoping that these will now um, protect from this happening again. There's my Navari kayak fishing. Um, but yeah, super yak fishing. Uh, my buddy Cliff, he uh, that's his, his new company. And he's really passionate about creating just... Uh, very practical, uh, you know, kayak supplies, um, you know, things that he would use. He's very passionate about kayaking as well, very passionate about fishing. And so he's coming out with a bunch of different things. This is just one of them. I'm going to show you some, a few of the other things uh, here in a little bit. All right, let's wrap around here. We got my rudder control. You'll see here we got the battery cables. So this one of them is going to the motor. The other one's going to the remora control throttle response. Um, right now, uh, the way I have this set up, because I used the Texas power paddle for the motor, uh, I, can't I can't put my transducer in there. So what I've done is I've actually gone to the uh, Scotty arm, swing out arm for my transducer. And when I'm done, I just kind of lift it up, slide it over. 
uh, and you know, I'm off and I'm, I'm good. Um, so, you know, this, this works really, really well. Slide it down. Um, it works really well, but I got something exciting because uh, Super Yak Fishing has come up with a very crafty, creative idea that I'm super excited to share with you guys that'll essentially eliminate this whole thing for me. Um, all right, over here, another double yak header, uh, yak attack double header. Um, and I have my catch board on here, drilled a hole in it, leashed it, and uh, put some packing foam with marine silicone in there. If you saw my video on the, the massive halibut I caught, uh, the halibut knocked my other catch board off and it slowly sunk to Davy Jones's locker. Uh, now with the leash plus this, that should be good. All right, and now coming up here all the way around. So we got this, let's see. Oh, this is cool guys. So you'll see this is a standard handle that comes on the uh, links. Um, I added this right here. This, I don't know who makes this easy carry. Um, on this so what it allows me to do is when I'm on the other side I can actually just hold this and lift the entire kayak um, kind of hold it kind of like a, uh, a notebook a um, little you know a little heavier but just hold it like that um, this right here guys is for those um, moments when you don't want to think about but you have to is if you capsize meaning your kayak somehow flips over you're in the water um, this right here will deploy like so and what you can do there's serves a couple purposes one if you're in the water and your kayak's upside down you can actually swing this over and then use this to pull to right side of the kayak from the other side so you'll you can see that you envision that it'll pull the kayak over um maybe might be better that way um using your body weight it just gives you a little bit more leverage and then once it's righted you can now drop this down and this serves as a foot step to help you get back into onto your kayak um, so uh, this is a great little add-on you know not pretty but doesn't but doesn't get in the way and uh, you'll be glad you have it when uh, when the time comes um, all right, so we've gone through the entire kayak now. Um, I want to share some very cool, exciting things from Super Yak Fishing. Um, the first thing I want to talk about here is, you know, we talked about that transducer. So you see this arm right here coming down, and I never had to worry about a transducer before because it was already installed into the kayak. Um, I just hop on the water and I'm good to go. Uh, but since again, I got the Texas Power Paddle Remora in there, uh, the motors in there, I now have to move the transducer out. Well, Cliff from uh, Super Yak Fishing has created a cool little solution. So you see, I don't know if you can see that Super Yak Fishing. He's created this little system right here that allows you to, you take your, your transducer and you can slide it in Obviously, I haven't, don't have it installed yet. You can slide it into here, this plate, and then you can secure it. And the way this works is on the, the Hobie links, you got this uh, power pole slot right here. Currently, it's just a cap on top. It essentially serves no purpose if you're not using a power pole. Well, he made this plate right here that allows this to go in like that. Let's see. Yeah, so it goes in like that. Takes You replace that plate with this. And underneath, this will tuck in right here where the other plate is. And then the transducer will hang off of this. Now, one of the questions I had originally when, when he was telling me about it was, dude, aren't you gonna, isn't the transducer gonna knock off um, when you're trying to transport it? And, you know, he thought of that too. So like he told me, and you know, you can see it right here. You can see that we got this curvature here on the kayak, right? And so this, these are gonna be your protective areas. So he has made this, so this plate goes in and your transducer will sit very, very close to the top, protected from any bangs and dings 
uh, that, you know, from loading the kayak car topping or trailer. Um, so that's really cool because now you can just keep this installed uh, and, you know, just leave it. Um, and, you know, he's been testing this on his Hobie Lynx for, I don't know, I'll say at least six months, um, has not had any issues um, as he's been prototyping and, and testing. And um, so he's finally productized it. This is freaking amazing. Super Yak Fishing, I'm super excited to get it installed on there. You can see it's made for the links to fit the, you know, the sleek lines and the curve of the, uh, the back of the hull here. So, um, super exciting. The transducer wire will come up through here and uh, yeah, you can plug it right into uh, the, um, uh, your fish finder. All right, product number two. I'll just bring everything over. All right, product number two. So for those days, you know, this is really for the uh, Texas Power Paddle folks out there. If you're if you're running the remora, you know that there are days when you're not taking the uh, remora out. And so uh, on those days, you know that you have this cable, right? This is the cable to the motor. Um, you have this thing just kind of sitting up on top. If, you know, imagine the battery's not there. Um, and you can see that those connectors are exposed to the elements. Um, and so especially if you're in salt water, that could not, uh, that not going to be good for those. So what Cliff did was he created a super yak fishing plug. And the way this works is you kind of just slide it in here. There we go. And there you go. And what it does is just protects any water from going in, uh, keeps it sealed. Um, you know, he's, he's put a little hole in there for a uh, stick a lanyard in. You can lanyard it right to your cable here, take it off, plug it in. If you're not using it, you just leave it on. And again, keep those electrical connections uh, protected. Um, and I think he sells them in a pack of two. Um, not sure, but super yak fishing very very neat uh neat thing all right now another cool thing and this is going to be installed here soon too so you'll see as mentioned i got this one right here this little plate from uh, nick at navari fishing and um, this plate is really designed for uh, the yak attack lock and load base mount um, cliff has one here you know because not everybody's using yak attacks uh, he's created one, you'll see right there, Super Yak Fishing, that mounts like that. And so now this allows you to put any um, attachment that has a T-slot. You'll be able to slide anything in here, screw it down, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm already, what I'm, what I'm thinking is either going to be um, potentially my gaff holder or maybe a net holder that can like stick up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure yet, but now that I have this, this is going to open up a lot of different cool ideas. So you can see right there, Super Yak Fishing right in the light. Very neat. All right. Now, the reason why I said I, I'm not sure if I'm going to put my net right there or what I'm going to do with it is because these are still in prototype here. This right here is a, uh, well intended to be a net holder but it could be an anything holder that goes right where the sail mount is right now i have my ram ball screwed into here um, but if i take the ram ball out i got a slot for this this would slide in there lock into place um, and then you would be able to turn it like this and maybe keep your net so if we kind of look at something like like so it'll keep it protected from falling off also give you quick access to take it and deploy. Um, you'll see what's really neat about this. You got these rollers here, but you got a carbon fiber shaft right here, uh, which is going to be great and durable, extremely durable. So you don't have to worry about something knocking and actually, you know, accidentally like cracking it or anything. So that's going to be super exciting. looks like he's got a little thing to put a little, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be very similar to the bungee system on the uh, Yak Attack here, where you can slide in a, um, 
uh, bungee cord and wrap it around to, to strap things in. But this is still in development. Um, you know, I'll leave a link to uh, Super Yak Fishing uh, in the description. Definitely go check it out. Uh, you know, give him a quick like. Uh, he'd really appreciate it. But more importantly, um, as he announced, as these things start to go, make its way through development, he can. Uh, you'll be up. Well, you'll be updated on it because he'll he'll update it on the site. All right, another cool thing. This is also in development. You'll see right there, Super Yak Fishing. This is a tray. So we talked about this tray right here. And what this tray, the difference in, with this tray here is you'll see he's got, this is another prototype here. So these will be, he tells me these will be stainless steel uh, T-mounts. And it can go on the H-rail, it can go on the regular track. Um, but it'll mount like this, as you can see. Um, very sleek. See that? It's very, very sleek. Um, and you'll see it has this little area right here for tools, like so. You know, I might give him some feedback to make the gap opening a little bit wider so I can get some scissors in there, but metal fit. Um, and then you know, obviously you can put your snips and stuff like that. So that's really neat. But now here's where it gets really cool. You can see inside there you got the drainage holes. Right, so how would you use this? Well, uh, in addition to draining, as you put lures out, you know, you're, you're on the, the water and uh, your lures are wet and you drop them in here, it'll drain. But now you can also look at this tray comes out, right? So you can clean this separately. And on the inside, oops, I just unscrewed the T bolt there. On the inside, you'll see he's got uh, magnets in here. And so what this allows you to do is it allows you to, let's say you got this case in here, we'll come over here. We all know what the Rapala J7 looks like. You know, you're on the water, you're switching baits, you throw that in there, right? That J7 is locked into place. The magnet is holding it. So let's say, for example, again, in case of a capsize or anything like that, uh, your baits will stay safe. You got spoons and stuff, it'll keep it in there. It'll just prevent it from like sliding all over the place and everything. Um, but I'm super stoked about this product. I think this is gonna be um, really hot. And again, love that you could just pull this out because we all know if you're dealing with like, uh, you know, different scents on your lures and stuff like that, it can gunk, leak and gunk up in there. And so the ability to take this out and clean it real fast, real easy, is gonna be nice. But yeah, also in development, give him a like, give him a follow, check out his Facebook page, um, and he'll give product updates as they uh, as he progresses. Let me come back around. All right, guys, well, I just, this was already a long video, but, um, you know, I've had some questions about, you know, how do I go out and, uh, you know, fish from a kayak? What does my setup look like? I'm very much trying to be as minimalistic as possible. Uh, every little less stuff I can carry, less stuff I need to carry, uh, less stuff that uh, I need to set up is great for me, but I also wanna make sure I have enough to, to get a full day of fishing in. Um, and uh, so, yeah, a lot of these things uh, have gone through multiple iterations, um, but let me know what you guys think. You know, let me know. It's, um, if you have any questions about the links, about the stability, uh, I got videos of it on the salt water. I uh, got videos in very choppy water and very windy conditions. Um, you know, let me know what you think. If you guys have questions about the kayak or if you guys have questions about any of the accessories I have on there, the rod holders or anything, uh, especially if you have any questions about, you know, Super Yak Fishing and what, what he's doing, what he's all about, some of the products he's creating. Again, I'll leave a link in the description, um, but definitely give him a, you know, check his stuff out. This stuff is, very very cool uh high quality stuff um looking forward to getting this installed and keeping my kayak protected with these uh these guards here these feet these skid plates are here um you'll see right there better view but uh yeah let me know if you have any questions thank you guys again for watching uh you know if you if this video was helpful please like this video 
Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. You know, I like to create this content for you guys. Um, like to show you what I'm up to and everything. So please subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one, guys. All right. Thank you very much. See ya.